Welcome to EM Rapid 2024. Today we are going to discuss the topic of diagnosis and management of sepsis. So we will first go towards the definitions, some definitions. So what is sepsis? So sepsis is a sepsis can be defined as a life threatening organ dysfunction which occur due to dysregulated host response to infection. So like it can be characterized by inflammation due to in infections, immune dysregulations, then microcirculatory derangements and engorgan dysfunction. Then there is an another definition for septic shock. So septic shock is the sepsis with persisting hypotension. So which will require vasopressors in case when there is, we cannot able to maintain a map of 65. So we will use vasopressors to maintain a map over 65 and having a when there is uh, we have to when there is a lactate level greater than 2 so we will uh, need adequate fluid resuscitation in cases of septic shock and if the fluid resuscitation is not uh, adequate we will have to start with vasopressor support for septic shock so the pathophysiology of sepsis will as uh, discussed earlier it is a dysregulated immune response host res response to the um, infection and which lead to the two events the first event is the hyper inflammatory response in the early stages of sepsis this will be a blunted response due to the increased secondary hospital acquired inf infections and results in programmed death of key immune epithelial and endothelial cells leading to tissue injury and multi-organ dysfunction and next we have imbalance in procoagulant and anticoagulant functioning in the most extreme situation which will result in the clinical syndrome of DIC and further we will discuss about septic shock as discussed earlier septic shock is an uh, sepsis with, with which uh, we, we are not able to maintain the uh, hypotension which will require IV fluid resuscitation and uh, followed by vasopressor support. Septic shock will be uh, accompanied by cardiovascular dysfunction and uh, can be uh, can see hypotension and also like we will need vasoactive drugs. And uh, like uh, signs, uh, signs we can see of the tissue perfusion like prolonged capillary refill, then oliguria, elevated blood lactate levels greater than 2, then metabolic acidosis as we can see in the blood, uh, blood gas. So some there are some red flags for sepsis. These are like presence of fever like the temperature greater than 38.3 or 101 degree Fahrenheit or hypothermia where the temperature is less than 36 degrees Celsius or 96.8 Fahrenheit. And we can also see tachycardia, heart rate greater than 100 and tachypnea, a heart rate, uh, a respiratory rate greater than 20 per minute and then will be abnormal pulse we can see like diminished weak bounding pulses, then abnormal capillary refill that is uh, the capillary refill will be greater than 3 seconds and hypotension that is we are not able to, the patient is not able to maintain a BP of um, map of less than uh, map of 65 not able to maintain a map of 65 the map uh, map is mean arterial blood pressure that is uh, diastolic blood pressure plus one third of pulse pressure then we can see patients with altered mental status and sometimes we can see purpura or uh, uh, petechia uh, also so we can next discuss about signs and symptoms in case of sepsis so sepsis patient will be like appearance will be toxic or ill appearance and the uh, patients can have signs of dehydration then rigates seizures can be there then a respiratory depression they can be there then patient can have decreased breath sounds distended tender abdomen uh, like we patient can have costovertebral angle tenderness in cases of pyelonephritis and uh, uh, also discussed earlier macular erythema can be there then uh, patient can have warm swelling or erythema of the joints in cases of osteomyelitis or septic arthritis then uh, peripheral edema can be there in patients due to capillary leak then we can have uh, ectima or uh, purpura purpura is like mostly associated with neisseria uh, meningitis and septococcus pneumonia 
So, uh, sepsis can be uh, diagnosed with, uh, with many parameters and we can use QSOFA as a screening tool. So, uh, only thing is that QSOFA should not be the only screening tool which is used for diagnosis of sepsis. So, uh, QSOFA can be used for uh, as a screening tool in part with other multiple parameters. So, QSOFA means QS sequential organ failure assessment. So, we have like three parameters for QSOFA, they are respiratory rate, BP and uh, uh, GCS. So, a, if respiratory rate is greater than 22, that is a score 1 and, and if the uh, systolic BP is less than 100, that is one, one more score and uh, altered GCS, that is a score of 1. If the score is greater than 2, the mortality will be high, that is greater than 10 and if the score is 1, we have a mortality of 2 to 3 percent and if the score is 0, we have mortality less than 1 percent. So, it is used for uh, screening of outcome mostly and rather than the diagnosis of sepsis. And so, sepsis is a medical emergency. So, uh, for sepsis we have to uh, do certain things within a span of 1 hour. Uh, as per the new surveying se sepsis guidelines, there are certain things we have to do within the 1 hour. That is, we have to recognize the sepsis within the 1 hour and we have to uh, like uh, sepsis we have to uh, get a VBG and uh, get the lactate measurement. We will uh, discuss about the lactate uh, later on and then uh, we have to get the uh, IV cannulation, uh, IV assess and uh, we have to uh, start with the rapid fluid resuscitation at 30 ml per kg and also we have to start with empirical antibiotics. Before starting with the empirical antibiotics, we should uh, get the cultures ready, uh, cultures and procalcitonin levels also. And uh, if the patient is not able to maintain a BP with the initial fluid resuscitation, we have to start with vasopressors uh, also. Then uh, about the lactate, lactic acid. So, lactate or lactic acid is a end product of anaerobic metabolism, anaerobic glucose, uh, anaerobic breakdown of the glucose in tissues. So, anaerobic glucose is yeah, anaerobic metabolism is produced when there is a tissue hyperperfusion that is seen in sepsis and a, a, a lactate level of greater than 2 is like we will get the idea of that is there is a hypoperfusion in the organ or uh, that is a hypotension is there and serum lactate level of greater than 4 is mostly consistent with the diagnosis of sepsis and uh, you can see lactic acidosis if the blood lactate level is greater than 5 with metabolic acidosis. Then for the treatment part, so for uh, treatment part we have we can have multiple uh, multi parameter treatment is uh, given for sepsis that is initially if the patient is with sepsis with the lact elevated lactates and all we will start with fluid resuscitation. So initially we will have a rapid fluid resuscitation. So, la rapid large volume of fluid 30 ml per kg is given initially. We can either give like uh, normal saline or ringer lactate or plasmalite. So, uh, we will give 2 to 3 liters of fluid will be administered within the first 3 hours. And um, as per the new uh, surveying sepsis guidelines, we can uh, there is no strict use of 30 mg per kg in cases of volume overloaded patients. Uh, and patients who respond to the therapy uh, in the fluid resuscitation, if the, we can reduce the amount of fluids uh, uh, as we are going on and we can um, uh, uh, reduce the uh, vasopressor supports and diuretics also can be uh, uh, used to avoid a fluid response, uh, sorry avoid a fluid as excess. In patients with ARDS and uh, uh, ARDS with sepsis, a restrictive fluid approach uh, for uh, has been uh, can be used to decrease the duration of uh, ventilation, mechanical ventilation and ICU stay. And the next one is after fluid resuscitation antibiotic therapy. So, initially we will start with an empirical antibiotic th therapy as already discussed. Empirical antibiotic therapy should be started within one hour af after taking the cultures. And if we uh, then later on uh, as we uh, get the cultures and we will start with like um, uh, uh, depending upon the cultures, we can start with uh, either of the an uh, antibiotics uh, sensitive for the uh, organism and uh, empirical antibiotic therapy for first in the first hour in septic shock and within three hours. And uh, like if 
uh, we can like we can diagnose if the uh, organism is like pseudomonas uh, we can start the patients with the anti pseudomonal cephalosporin carbapenem or uh, beta lactams then um, this can be started along with vancomycin and if the patient uh, is having an organism that is uh, unlikely to be pseudomonas we can start vancomycin with uh, a third generation uh, uh, cephalosporin or beta lactams or carbapenem also so the next one for uh, sepsis is fluid resuscitation uh, antibiotic therapy then vasopressors if fluid resuscitation uh, cannot maintain the patient's bp we can start patient on vasopressors vasopressors is a second line of treatment uh, for patients with uh, septic shock after the iv fluids so uh, like if the patient uh, we can uh, multiple uh, vasopressors can be used for the first line of agent is norepinephrine which can be uh, started with the dose of 0.1 to 1 microgram per kg per minute ideally we should give this through the central line and additional agents like vasopressin can also be used and if, if the patient is not responding uh, we can also add up epinephrine or adrenaline so uh, we can also start with ionotropic support like uh, dobutamine is the first line agent ionotropic uh, support which can also be used who fail to respond to fluids and vasopressors so then there is steroids as per guidelines st uh, steroids are not uh, recommended for sepsis but uh, however corticosteroid therapy can be an uh, can be used as in appropri appropriate patients with septic shock that is refractory to the fluid and vasopressor administration you can uh, use like 50 to 100 uh, mg of steroids q uh, qyd for treatment so then the uh, latest one for the sepsis is human angiotensin 2 receptors which can be used for in patients with catecholamine resi resistant septic or uh, distributive shock so initially we can uh, start with 20 nanogram per kg per minute continuous infusion followed by we can titrate it uh, up to uh, 50 nanogram per kg per minute to achieve a target blood pressure and uh, later on we can uh, maintain it uh, up, uh, up to the 40 nanogram per kg per minute and uh, once the shock is been um, we are uh, able to uh, maintain a map above 65 we can tighten it downwards uh, like up to 15 uh, by downwards 15 nanogram per kg per minute then for the targets that we have to achieve for sepsis sepsis so initially we have told like a map of greater than 65 is very needed for ma uh, ma management of sepsis and urine output should be greater than 0.5 ml per kg per hour and we have to maintain a central venous pressure of target of 8 to 12 mil mmhg and central venous oxygen saturation with, uh, which should be above 70 percent and serum lactate uh, should be uh, check uh, regularly to check for the lactate clearance so lactate clearance is uh, the uh, we have to uh, it's an equation so initial lactate minus the uh, lactate we have got by after two hours divided by the initial lactate into two so a uh, lactate clearance of more than 10 percentage after two hours that means we are um, uh, treating the patient well and good and patient hypotension is getting relieved so uh, septis focus identification and source control are uh, the main uh, need for management of sepsis so these are the targets as discussed earlier that's about sepsis management thank you